Minor means minor. Dorian means Dorian. I see your point. I mean, when we're not talking about right. okay, if we're talking about the quality of a chord, then minor would mean an A minor chord. But yes. that's only going up to the third. Right. Beyond that, <coughs> then we have to make a distinction. Right. So I'm just trying to make the distinction between the word minor and the, and the word Dorian. Well, I'm using. Uh, I'm using. I'm sorry. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm using Dorian in this case because <laughs> that is the chord scale, and I suppose you could make an argument that Dorian in jazz is more common than. Aeolian. Well, this is what people tell me. They go, "Well, my teacher said, you know, just when you see a minor, think Dorian." But I always say, when you have think minor, you have to decide whether it's minor or whether it's Dorian. I mean, I, I ask well, because well, you know what? Thing. But I agree with you in that case because, That's what for I'm example, asking. for example, a lot of the Abrasol and stuff that you look at, or maybe the real book or whatever, it will just say minor. But exactly what you're saying, if if you're not sure, like this is what the way I like to think of it, and I don't know if if uh, if this if you would agree with me, Charlie or or Daryl. Or, and, um, I think that it's more common in jazz if the first chord, if, if that's like the tonic, like a tune like Arigen, you know, you know, then you're going to have, it's better to have a minor 6 than a minor 7, you know, and that's because Listen to the difference. Here's minor six. It's a, it's a, it's a minor nine. Right? That has a seventh in it, doesn't it? No. Here's with the seven. Can anybody tell me a, a, just a gut feeling difference? The seven wants to resolve down. Yeah. Three. Yes. Um, I just want to make a note that it's five to two, and so however you want to do time thing, I just thought I'll I'll give that reminder so that we can, if we decide we want to stay on time or if we want to stretch, either one is cool. Oh, okay. Well, let, let me just kind of speed through. Can I just? Speed oh no, through this take your time. Okay. You see, however you want to do it, we can go over. I just wanted to just we say at five to two, then we can five two, then we can make a decision about uh, if we're going to go over, if we're going to stop go on time. I want to hear your thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be way more interesting. But, so, but anyway, so uh, just to talk through this list, and then maybe I'll play the solo that I wrote hastily last mm -hmm. night. But, um, so, you know, just, and, and, and uh, Dan, this is, I mean, this is the stuff that I think is important, because we're kind of getting to the nuts and bolts, and a lot of people will go for years and not even, and will just play something and not even listen to it. You know what I mean? So it's always good to question these things, even if, I mean, even, I mean, question us, you know what I mean? Like, if you think it's something else, if you can justify it, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm for that. Yes. So, are you talking to me? Yes. So I, and I don't want to take more of our time, but I just want to, I just want to, I just want to clarify one thing, is that, so when you say, and I want Daryl and Charlie to answer this too, and then we'll be, I don't want to ever ask this again. <laughs> so, somebody says, Herbie plays minor against the A, the D sus, he plays an A minor scale. What scale would you think he? What do you think? What would that mean to you? Somebody said the A minor scale over D sus. What What, what would I say? would say is that I would try to and assess what the common practice is. Common practice since the Abersolds and since the Real Book um, has been that when people are speaking of minor chord scales, they're usually referring to Dorian. It's not theoretically correct in terms of Western harmony. It's not. It wouldn't get you passed in a music school, but it's what people mean now. That's okay, my that's, that's my impression. But check it out, though, because the, if, if you put, were to use Aeolian, the natural minor, as your scale, this is what your chord is going right. to sound like. Right, well, I know. That's why, that's why I was going, wow, that is cool. I mean, that's what I thought. Well, that's really different. He, so that's what Herbie does. But then you go, oh, he's playing Dorian. Well, then it's just Mixolydian. Well, yeah, but I think I think it's I think he thinks maybe more in terms of like bebop, right. like instead of saying like like I think he thinks more like you know what I mean? Like, right. and that to me kind of makes more sense because more you, of a Dorian bebop. Well, it's like you're automatically going to the upper extensions. Uh, who here is totally lost? 
That's cool. Okay, anyway, I'm <laughs> sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that, Daryl. I appreciate that. Uh, Thursday. If you, if you really need further clarification, I want people. I don't want people to be lost, but I think this no, is good. I, I mean, I certainly don't want anybody to be bored. So no. it's better to be lost than to be bored. Um, okay. Uh, figure out the chord scales. Uh, apply devices, patterns, shapes, licks, etc., to the chords. So, uh, for example, there was something Joe Henderson did. He kind of played this shape that was like, you know, uh, that would be one thing you could apply to every chord. If you could just go, you know. You know, that would be just one example of something you could work through everything. Or you could take even a simpler device, like, say you were to just take, uh, chromatic surround tones of each root of the chord. Yeah, that's another way to uh, kind of work through the chords. Um, okay, so the next thing, number five, write a solo, I'll come back to that. Number six, get an Abersol record, play along with it, or get together with your friends, play the tune. Seven, memorize the melody, memorize the chords. Eight, learn the melody and chords in every key. That might seem like a tall order to some of you, but it kind of forces you to analyze these melodies, you know? And I think if, at first it may be a pretty slow process, but it's not impossible. And certainly any of you who, it's, I'm really sad that we don't have any singers. Believe it or not, I am sad that we don't have any singers. <laughs> the reason I think that we, we as instrumentalists, uh, need to have a, you know, find common ground with singers is because uh, both sides can learn from each other so much. I mean, uh, there's certain skills that uh, rhythm section players can really only get strong if you're working with singers, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's the kind of thing which may not seem like it's technically amazing, but it might mean the difference between you working and not working, you know? All my, from like, I mean all the 90s, that's what I did, is play with singers, and that's how I made a living, you know? Um, that, sh that could be a whole other workshop. <laughs> that's tomorrow. Uh, all right, I think, I think we got to move on, but let me just try to play this solo. So I think that for some of you, just to, you know, the fact that you're developing your improvisational skills and you're learning these chord scales and you're learning the chords and learning voicings, you're learning patterns and whatever. Um, but keep in mind that um, trying to improvise over a chord progression is very much like what Charlie Parker was doing when he wrote Confirmation or when he wrote Donald, well, we don't know if he wrote Donald, we think that was Miles Davis, but um, when he wrote a lot of these tunes, which we call a contrafact, is a, a, a melody over an existing chord progression, uh, sort of working out his harmonic and melodic concept. You know? So I think for many of you, trying to get a sense of like, well, how do I make lines over these chords? You know? A good thing to do is to write it out. You know, and and just see what you can come up with in slow motion. So that way, when you get on your instrument, you have a you, that's the sped up process. You know? But anyway, let's just see if I can play this. So like,
keyboard. Just to give you an example, though, that's something you could do just to work out. I mean, I think I used a, a variety of techniques, and I tried to have some kind of an interesting shape to it. Um, and I mean, of course, it's not it's not really like that melodic. It's more like improvisatory. But um, you know, this is just a, uh, an example of how to negotiate these changes. You know, um, I stayed pretty much uh, I want to say diatonic. I didn't really venture that far into any weird dissonances. You know. Um, is there anything you could say that is missing from this? And, and, and I guess what I'm driving at is like if you compare this to the solos we heard, like for example the Joe Henderson solo, or maybe the, the Cortina solo particularly, yes. I would say the Joe solo, to me sometimes a bar would really be playing for three or four, three beats would really be playing for three beats. You leave it open. Sure, sure. Um, what I was driving at really is just the rhythmic variety, hmm. you know. This all, this is pretty much just eighth notes. I mean, there's there's a little bit of syncopation in here, but it's pretty much just eighth notes. And the reason is because it takes more time to do triplets and sixteenths on Sibelius. So this is real quick, you know. But um, but that's another thing too is to try to develop rhythmic variety and rhythmic things that are rhythmically interesting in your solos, you know, because uh, we don't ever want to forget about that. It's very easy to get uh, sort of, uh, I don't want to say bogged down, but sort of uh, immersed in the harmony and the melody aspects of it. But the reason that, again, that this music is distinctive is because of the rhythm, you know. And so, so try not to forget about that. And also when you listen to recordings, try to figure out you know, what people are doing rhythmically, you know. To me, that was the most surprising thing about listening to that recording, is just the amount, like, how much rhythmic variety was in Joe Henderson's solo, you know. I mean, saxophone players are going to be impressed with his speed, but it's really just his fluidity, you know. And there's a lot of things that, that jazz musicians play that can't necessarily, it's hard, they're hard to write down, you know, because they float in a way that's not easily, uh, you know, discernible by uh, Western notation. You know. So, um, what else did I say here? Write a solo, Abersol, memorize melody, practice various. Oh, okay, so this is this goes along with the rhythmic conception. Uh, you can practice through the tune. Like you can take one concept and practice you know, a number of courses just with that idea. Like you could just take two note ideas, you could take three note ideas. Maybe when we have the combos, you know, when you guys come to me, I'll, I'll work out some of this stuff. But the last thing, number 10, skip down to the bottom, is practice in time continuously for as long as you can, from 10 minutes to two hours to a whole day. Any, any of these songs. Apparently this is what Theolonius Monk used to do, you know. And even if you can't get to your instrument, if you Eventually, you'll just be hearing these forms in your head on the bus or the streetcar or whatever. And so that's another way that you can kind of work out ideas. You know, that's, I think, the eventual goal is to be able to practice and hear stuff in your head. You know. um, that, I think that was a really a turning point for me as a musician because when I started traveling, um, I couldn't get to it. This was before MIDI keyboards, so I couldn't get to a piano. It was frustrating. So I had, there was no choice. If I wanted to practice, I had to do it without an instrument, you know. And, but that is, can actually be a better way because then you really have it in your brain as opposed to just in your fingers. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. The last one, is that just the form, the head, or improvising with it? Yeah. Last one. Okay. I don't know if you want to play the melody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little weird. So, all right. Well, uh, so now. I'm